Lecture 5, East Asia, Foreign Conquest and Influence. During the 1200s, China, Korea, and Southeast Asia faced the terrifying foreign threat posed by the Mongols. Later, Southeast Asia came into contact with traders from another powerful foreign culture, the Islamic culture. For reasons of trade as well, Western European countries also expressed pronounced interest in gaining influence over Eastern cultures. Christian missionaries followed in wake of these Western merchants. Mongol role in China and Korea. The Mongols are an East Asian, Central Asian ethnic people. The Liao dynasty lasted from 907 to 12, 1125, that's 907 to 1125, was an empire that ruled over Mongolia, an Eastern Russian region, and Northern China and Korea. During the time of its rule, Central and Southern China were ruled by a rapid succession of dynasties and kingdoms, all of which came to an end around the time of China's Song dynasty. The Liao dynasty ended in 1125 after the Mancurian Jurgen tribe successfully rebelled against Liao rule. A quasi lawless state of uncertainty followed the collapse of the Liao dynasty. During this time, around 1162, a baby boy named Temujin was born to a Mongolian woman. In 1206, Temujin united the nomadic Mongolian people into a vast empire. He eventually became known as Genghis Khan, or Genghis Khan, which means fierce or firm ruler. Genghis Khan lived from 1162 to 1227. Mongol Invasions into Southeast Asia During the 1200s, the Mongols attempted to conquer Southeast Asia as well, but with little sustaining success. From 1281 to 1285, the Mongols aimed at overtaking the Vietnamese. They were defeated by a Vietnamese and Cham alliance, which succeeded in beating back the Mongols. The Vietnamese general Trong Hung Dao led the anti-Mongol forces. Before leading these forces, the Vietnamese king Tran Nan Tong asked the general if the Vietnamese should surrender to the Mongols in order to be saved from almost certain destruction. Trong Hung Dao is reputed, reputed to having replied, quote, But what will become of the lands of our ancestors, the temples of our elders? If you wish to surrender, if you wish me to surrender, order my head to be severed first. End of quote. This strong response motivated the king to defend his land with Trong Hung Dao in the lead. The soldiers under Trong Hung Dao's command tattooed on their arms death to, Mon to the Mongols. A few years later, in 1287, the Mongols invaded the kingdom of Pagan, located in modern-day Burma, or Minamar. This invasion was short-lived since the Mongols were unaccustomed unaccustomed to the tropical weather of Southeast Asia and withdrew north to China. The Mongol naval invasion of Java, an island of modern-day Indonesia, was also unsuccessful. Islam, were Islam in the Malay world Islam gained great influence over the Malay people who are descendants of the Mongolians. A few thousand years ago, the Malay people migrated from India and other regions of Asia to settle in Southeast Asia. The nations that constitute the majority of Malay people of Southeast Asia are Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines. The Malays are also present in southern Thailand and Brunei. Currently, the Malay people make up around 20% of the Islamic world. Not all, though, are Islamic. This is most noticeable in the Philippines, where 90% of the population are Christians, with the majority being Catholic. Before the advent of Islam, the Southeast Asian lands of the Malay people were highly influenced by two religions from India, Buddhism and Hinduism. These two religions competed with one another. The Southeast Asian islands were first introduced to religions from India when the people from India established settlements on the islands. At times, the relationships between Buddhism and Hinduism was expressed by tension, and other times the two religions blended with each other and with the natural religions of the native people. During the 7th century, a distinctly Buddhist empire came to power. It was followed in the 1300s by a Hindu empire. 
The Islamic influence of Southern, Southeast Asia was prepared by Arab traders who sailed to East Asia. According to Chinese records, the Arabs settled in Sumatra in 674 AD. Sumatra is an island of Western Indonesia. After Muhammad lived from 570 to 632 AD, after Muhammad united Arab tribes with his Islamic religion, Arab tribes traders who were Islamic established settlements in East Asia and Southeast Asia. It is debated among scholars to what extent, if any, these Islamic traders sought out converts to Islam. It was not until the 1200s when the people of the island of Sumatra converted to Islam. According to a classic text of Malay history called the Annals of Akin, in 1204 AD, Quote, Sultan Johan Shah came from the windward and converted the people of Akin to the Mohammedan faith. He married the daughter of Baludri of Akin and by her had a son, after a reign of 30 years, was succeeded by his son Sultan Ahmad. End of quote. This conversion of people of Sumatra was confirmed by Marco Polo in 1292 when he reported visiting Sumatra. From the 1200s up until the present people, up until the present, people of land associated with Indonesia increasingly converted to Islam. Currently, Indonesia is the largest Muslim-majority nation in the world. Over 197 million Muslims live in Indonesia. Two other Southeast Asian countries which also have a Muslim majority are Malaysia and Brunei. Large Muslim minorities are present throughout Southeast Asia, including in Singapore, Thailand, and the Philippines. Among all the religions of Southeast Asia, Islam has the most number of adherents of about 250 million, which is around 60% of the total world population of 1.3 billion Muslims. A country where Islam was prevented from expanding is the Philippines, which is a predominantly Catholic country. When the Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellans, at the service of the Spanish king, arrived in 1521 to what is now known as the Philippines, he planted a wooden cross and asserted that all the islands was property of Spain. The islands were, consequently, named after the Spanish king Philip II. Following the trade routes established by Magellan and others, Catholic missionaries evangelized the Filipinos. Due to the missionary presence, backed by the Spanish king, the presence of Islam greatly decreased and was replaced by Catholicism. Today, Philippines is about 80% Catholic. The largest minority religion in the Philippines is Islam, coming in at only 5% of the total population. Western Trade, Christianity, and East Asia the discovery of new trade routes to Asia prompted a competition between Portugal and Spain over who could colonize the Asian lands. In an attempt to settle the dispute and to bring order to missionary activity, Pope Alexander VI issued three bulls. In his first bull, Inter Chetera, he defined Spain's territorial rights. And in your transcript, I include a lengthy excerpt from this bull. Influenced by Pope Alexander VI's concern that missionary activity takes place in an ordinary manner, the following year in 1494 the Treaty of Tordesillas was signed between Spain and Portugal. This treaty established trading and colonizing rights for Portugal and Spain. Building upon the Treaty of Tordesillas, the Treaty of Saragossa in 1529 further divided up the entire known world between these two European powers. According to the two treaties, Portugal was allowed to trade with and colonize the lands to the established of their east of their established lines, and Spain was allowed to trade with and colonize the lands to the west of the lines. These treaties only made sense as long as Portugal and Spain were the only European countries seeking to establish overseas empires. As other European nations joined in the race to establish their dominance throughout the world, these treaties began to be ignored. Finally, in 1750, the Treaty of Madrid overturned the Treaty of Tordesillas. Prior to the discovery of new trade routes by sailing east around Africa or by sailing west around South America, Asia was reached by the Silk Routes. 
which the Venetian merchants Mar merchant Marco Polo wrote about in the 1200s to 1300s. The silk that these trade routes were named after was extracted from silkworms raised in China. The Chinese had mastered silk cultivation 2,000 to 3,000 years before the birth of Christ. In time, land and sea trade routes developed between China and the Mediterranean lands. During the first century AD, the Roman Pliny the Elder, in his natural history, referred to the great quantities of East Asian silk that the Romans had recently obtained by way of the silk routes. Christian missionaries followed the silk routes in order to bring Christ to East Asia. According to the Mar Thomas Church of India, St. Thomas the Apostle not only evangelized Indias in the 60s AD, but also traveled to China and then returned to India. This traditional claim received some archaeological support when bas relief sculptures on a rock face in China's Jiangsu province were re-examined by scholars. Some scholars now think that these sculptures are not Buddhist figures, but rather depictions of early Christians, including the apostles Thomas and the Blessed Mother. The sculptures have been dated to the time of the Chinese Mingdi Emperor, lived from 57 to 75 AD, who lived at the time of the Apostle Thomas. It wouldn't be until a number of centuries later when Eastern Christians of a heretical group called the Nestorians began evangelizing China in an orderly manner. Their activity was affirmed in the 1620s AD when a nine-foot-high marble steel was uncovered. The Chinese characters in the Syriac letters on the steel describe the history of early Christianity in China. The author Jingling is identified as a Christian monk. The date he gives to the beginning of Chinese Christianity is 635 AD. The top of the steel is decorated with a lotus blossom, out of which a cross is emerging. Below the flower is the title, a monument commemorating the propagation of Da Qin, luminous religion in China. End of quote. This also may be translated as the story of the coming of the religion of light from the West to China. Scholars are not in agreement on why this early form of Chinese Christianity did not last. By the end of the Tang Dynasty in 907, Christianity had virtually disappeared from China. Many centuries later, in the 1500s, Jesuit missionaries reintroduced China Christianity to China. God bless. Mm -hmm.